everyone, welcome back to Shutter Magazine. I'm Dustin Lucas and today I'm excited to talk to you about the three steps to automating your editing workflow. So as an editor myself, automation is key in saving time, right? Um, you know, with batch processes that become just so simple for you to let your computer do the work or as AI is getting better and better, it's not quite there yet, um, but you know, um, there's always time for that, um, especially with technology, but you really want to start utilizing tools beyond just editing in Lightroom, taking it into Photoshop, doing everything by hand. It just gets expensive. Um, it's costing you a lot of time. Of course, there's a time and place for everything uh, when you're focused on you know, that larger artwork. Um, you definitely want to be working on that by hand, but there is a way for you to apply things like portraiture, um, apply dodging and burning, um, applying different tonal things to your images that you want to kind of batch across them once you've done your job of consistently color correcting in Lightroom there are just ways to make Lightroom and Photoshop talk a little more fluidly so we're gonna go through that so step one is creating actions and droplets in Photoshop so many of you might be familiar maybe you have an action but we're gonna walk through how to save an action um, real quick simple way to do it um, how to organize those actions and then saving a droplet. You might be wondering, huh, I work in Photoshop all the time, never heard of a droplet. What's that? Well, a droplet is a file that you can save that will recall an action um, from Lightroom. So basically, when you're exporting your files from Lightroom, you have the ability to use droplets and use different things, um, part of your post-processing um, processes from Lightroom, um, you can have that droplet run. So you could actually have portraiture ran or any other action, right? Many of you might be running portraiture through the plugin. Again, don't get hung up on what action I'm applying, but that you could apply any action to a batch of images very quickly, save them and move on. Um, and then step number three, which I think is the most important thing, anytime you have automation, you want to test, test, um, and test some more. Uh, because as soon as you think everything's good, you run an update in Photoshop, then your file size in JPEG goes back to like a quality of eight versus a quality of 12. And all your images are shrunk in size, right? Lower quality, little things like that. You wanna make sure to test and make sure all those parameters, all those expectations of that automation um, are successful. So let's dive into step number one, creating an action um, and creating droplets. All right, so step number one is going to be creating an action and droplet. So many of you might have actions already. You can skip cast past this part, but I think it's important to kind of understand best practices when making actions too. So many of you might have the layers in your different um, uh, tab groups pop up here. If you don't see actions, just click up on the window at the very top and you can click on the actions um, option. Now you have history, actions, comments, all this stuff, right? So I have already have some actions put together here. But what I want to do is I want to create a whole new action set and I want to create a new action for this article. So I'm going to click on the folder to create an action set. So this is where any actions that I want and I'll call this one my batching tasks. Okay. Now any of my batching task actions and you can see that I already have one here, right? Um, I've already built one, but we're going to do it again. So this is where I want to save those batching tasks so they're all organized, right? I have workflow ones, different ones here, ones for Shutter Mag, all that kind of stuff, right? It's pretty cool. So now I'm ready to save an action once I've created that action set. I think that's very important versus just kind of putting everything under one set and then you just have kind of a long list of crap um, to kind of go through every time, right? So I kind of like to organize those things as a digital artist. So once I click on that set, I'm going to click on this button to start my action. And this one's going to be called 01 Skin Smoothing, uh, if I can spell correctly. It's always fun. Skin Smoothing plus um, Output Sharpening. I had a brain fart there. So I want to have a little bit of sharpening, output sharpening applying after uh, my image is uh, skin softened a little bit so it can bring back some of that detail. I like to do that afterwards. Same way if you're uh, reducing noise you'd want to sharpen afterwards, right? Um, so I have a little bit of endpoint, uh, input sharpening applied to the image when I um, saved it out of Lightroom already. But for now, I think this will guess where we need to go. And you'll see that in the set, it's gonna be in my batching tasks, that's good. Now what's cool about 
uh, creating actions is you can also do function keys. So if you want F1, F19 to be your hotkey or your shortcut for this action that you would apply to single images, I think that's super helpful, especially if like you have a retouching tool set action that you wanna do, um, or one that's gonna be image specific. Um, it'd be really cool to have that as an F key quickly to recall. Um, again, those little things, saving half a second, um, you might kind of roll your eyes on it, but um, it's kind of a neat feature as well. And then you can do colors. I don't mess with any of that crap, right? Just do the names and the sets and move on. So we're gonna click record, and you see that the little recording button's going, and now, it's time to record our action. So I am a practicer of non-destructive editing. So I'm always gonna duplicate my background as my first um, step, especially if I'm making um, image layer um, adjustments. So if I'm making layer adjustments, not a problem, right? Uh, but image layer adjustments do matter. So uh, I think it's uh, Control, Command, J. Uh, nope, Option, Command, J, there we go. I already forgot it um, for my skin softening. So I'm just gonna call this uh, skin softening. So it doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna use portraiture for this, um, but it really doesn't matter. Now what's cool about this is I can set the mode, uh, blending mode and the opacity right here, which I recommend doing. Um, if I don't do it here, right, I highly recommend not clicking here and doing it, but double clicking on layer style because it's gonna save all of that information. Right, so just quick way, I don't ever change blending modes here when I'm saving an action because I want it to be saved here properly. Um, so if I'm double clicking on this and I wanna change this later, I'm gonna put this at 60%. Go ahead and click okay. And it's gonna do set layer, right? Now, as far as I know, if I don't do that and I start over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that out skin smoothing let's do it in the layers panel just to see if it's saving that the right way um, I'm quite certain it doesn't store that information the same um, it seems to be okay um, it stores it you know pretty similarly um, maybe that's not my experience from before but I usually just do it in layer styles so kind of starting over and that I've already done that um, I'm gonna go back to here and leave that alone so let's go ahead and stop delete and start over real quick okay so just showing you real quick those changes so action 01 skin smoothing plus output sharpening doesn't hurt to um, restart that process we want to make sure everything is clean right so we're going to do new layer skin smoothing 60% Okay, now I'm gonna go up here, apply my portraiture three, just real standard, normal um, portraiture three applied to the whole image, done. Now what I wanna do is I want to duplicate the background layer again. I'm gonna call this output, sharpen, and I'm gonna change this to overlay and I'm gonna change this to 75%. And I drag this to the top, okay? Obviously this isn't what we want our image to look like, but that's interesting contrast, right? Just doing something like that. But what I wanna do is apply a high pass filter, and I want to make sure that I can start to see her face just on the edges, just as this starts out, right? I just want it to be mild, as mild as possible. So we'll put this down here at like one, one, perfect. And that's done. Now, I'm just gonna assume that my process is done. I'm going to right click, flatten. I'm going to shift command S, save as, that's very important. Um, it doesn't matter where this goes, but I'm just gonna save it in desktop, save, Oop, replace it. Uh, we don't necessarily want that, so I'll just put it in there, save. Now this is very important, right? So I wanna make sure that usually Photoshop's set to quality eight. I want it to be at maximum at 12. Um, and what's cool about doing it this way is it's going to save all that information in our action. So it doesn't matter what Photoshop's doing um, at default, this will be saved. Um, which over uh, overwrites that, which is great. 
And then what I like to do is do Command W, right, and our image closed. So I go back, open that up, and the action's still running, right? So I hit stop, and I drag open down to trash. Now, what's important to me is that if we want all of these to run, I can unclick these to make sure my action is doing what it's supposed to, right? So if I apply that action, and of course it's being run on there double, so this looks quite quite heavy. But as you can see, and we're zoomed in at 100%, right? If we hold Option and do this, we can see that it's applying that sharpening again, way too heavy. Um, so just wanted to show you with opening it up and saving that out. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Right, we can take our image all the way back to here, um, back to the original, and run. Right, so we want to make sure that everything's running correctly. Now, this is run on it twice, so let's go and grab another image just to make sure that everything in our action is running accordingly. So, I'm gonna go ahead and export. Um, we'll just go ahead and done. What we can do is just have this open. Let's see here. Cancel. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm open anyways. Perfect. So we can go ahead and just run this action as is in this image. So we zoom in here and right. So that sharpening is just bringing some of that out. And if we want that sharpening to come down 75%, we can. Right, so if we leave this on here and we want to update this, um, if we want to update our action, we can. All we need to do is just find where we did that opacity. So if I double click on that, right, and I want this to be, let's say we want it to be 60 just to be safe, we click OK, great. Now this should, in theory, apply. Here we go. And it saved it at 60, right? So little things, right? If you want to update or edit an action, it might be something handy. But you can double click on there when you have um, when you have those steps done correctly. Um, which I feel like if you want to update your action at any time, you can um, just apply it and then double click on that step to update it. That's it. You want me to put it back to 75? I can. 75. Okay. Right. Um, it's done. We just throw those away. And my output sharpening is back at 75, so pretty cool. Okay, let's move on to, real quick, we want to make sure that we turn these back on. Another thing that I think is really important is learning to use the dialog box. So you might have a, a retouching uh, action that you want dialog boxes to turn on or you want dialog boxes to turn off. Um, those things can be really important as well. So for instance, if I wanted a dialog box to pop up every time I run the high pass bar, I can click on toggle dialog on and off, right? So if I turn it on and I run this action, now I have preference for what that's going to be. Now, if I'm running a batch action, of course I don't want that opened on every image. You have to decide on a pixel value for sure, but just wanted to let you know what that dialog option was. Pretty important if you have one-off, um, if you have one-off uh, actions, um, especially like retouching ones. So I'm going to turn that off for this. I don't want any of those to run, and I want to make sure my flatten save all that is good to go. Now, now that we're done, we are ready to save a droplet. So up here in the file menu, automate, right? Makes sense. Automation, create a droplet, and now we're going to save a droplet out. Now I already have one saved here in my documents, but it's important to understand how I'm saving that out and why I'm naming it such a way. So I name the droplet the same as the action. I think that makes sense. What droplet am I applying? What action is it applying? It's applying that action. Pretty straightforward, right? Organization is your friend. So droplets, putting that in there, right? And then I want to make sure that action's applying here. And then I choose for it to just do none, right? Because I have save and close and flatten all built into the action. So none of that other stuff matters. It just automatically does it. I like to control it here versus letting Photoshop control. Because when you update Photoshop, it will change those settings on you later. So 
Now we're ready to move on to step two for Lightroom export presets. All right, so those are the three steps to automating your editing workflow. So whether you're using portraiture, pre-built actions, um, none of that stuff really matters. Those details are all up to your workflow. I wanna show you how you can marry Lightroom to Photoshop and have that run um, with some automation. Save yourself some time. You imagine running this on 800 images. Um, go have lunch, let the computer do the work, come back and it's done. Um, or you can have this running in the background Typically, it's a little clunky when it's running in the background on your computer and you're trying to do other tasks. But I mean, it's applying exactly what I need on my images um, to apply some skin smoothing and portraiture. It's a perfect kind of finalization um, export process. So I definitely recommend take the time, follow the three steps, create some actions or buy some, save a droplet, create export presets in Lightroom. Um, and whenever you do that, when you update Lightroom, Photoshop, I mean, there's definitely some issues with the newest Lightroom, new, newest Photoshop with droplets and things like that. I was running into those issues myself. So make sure you're testing out your workflow, finding, um, getting the applications in the right versions, all of your actions and everything saved correctly. So that way you don't find out two hours later when you come back to your computer that nothing was done because of a simple error. Um, so testing is the biggest part. So now that you're ready to let the computer do the work, right? Go and focus on those more important things. Thanks for tuning in.